Linear perspective is a way of representing a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. Our computer screen gives us only width and length, and we're also interested in representing depth. So let's start with a box in space and have a look at some of the properties of this object. As I rotate around the object, you can see there's it, it looks pretty natural how I maneuver around the box and I can see sort of different sides of it depending on where I position my point of view. But there's some properties of a perspective drawing that are interesting. Uh, one is the horizon line. So the green field here is the ground and the blue field above it is the sky and the place where they meet is the horizon line. And what's interesting about the horizon line is that's where all my vanishing points are. So let's talk about what a vanishing point is. All of the parallel lines in my rendered image intersect at vanishing points. So normally in uh, Euclidean geometry we say that parallel lines do not intersect. Um, in this case, what I mean is that the lines that are parallel in the three-dimensional space, when they're rendered in my two-dimensional space, they intersect. So it's really the projections of parallel lines onto my computer screen that are intersecting at this point on the horizon line. And it's that property of intersecting parallel lines that gives the illusion of depth on my two-dimensional surface. So um, these lines happen to also intersect where that green axis disappears onto the screen. There's nothing particularly magic about the green axis. If I switch over here where we can see the red axis, I'll see that the lines parallel to the red axis disappear over with it. So I have another vanishing point over there. There's nothing particularly magic about these ax the vanishing points at these axes. I can rotate my cube, or my box, into sort of an arbitrary position, and then see the same property displayed along different um, parallel, a different set of parallel lines. So these lines are not parallel to any of my axes, but they still show up with a vanishing point on the horizon line. That actually lets me get to a more precise definition of the horizon line. We can say that the horizon line is actually the set of all vanishing points generated from lines that are parallel to the ground. So if my lines are parallel to the ground plane, then a set of those parallel lines will vanish to a point, and the set of all of those points is my horizon line. And again, that's my horizon line, and that happens to be one particular vanishing point. So that's a quick intro to some terminology and a, a quick view of what happens with a perspective object. But I want to talk now a little bit about why it works the way it does. So to understand that, we need to have a sense of what's actually happening in this three-dimensional space. And so let me now I'm going to get a little bit more room between my observer and the cube I'm interested in. And we'll get another little deal out here. Oops. What I'm doing now is creating an image of our picture plane. So you can imagine that what I have 
is the three-dimensional model of some box in this case that's sitting inside my computer and it's being drawn in a picture that's trying to be convincing to my observer. So the scenario is that I have a person standing in a particular place relative to that box. I can move them around and that changes my view of the box and that's what happens when I do this. I'm actually moving the observer around um, in that virtual space. Um, and I have a, a picture plane which is basically the computer screen. So object, picture plane, and observer. Those are sort of the important pieces of the, of the um, elements that create a perspective image. Um, and let's work with a slightly simpler object. Drop this back down. Oops, not quite that simple. Let's try that a different way. So now I'm going to work with just a rectangle on the ground for the sake of having something simpler to work with. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is simplify my observer. I'm going to change the observer into just a line so that I have a simpler case for the geometry. Let me move this guy out of the way. So this point here at the top of the line, that little green dot there, is my point of view. That's that's the eye that I took off of the observer. So I have a point of view, a picture plane, and an object being displayed. And then the other piece that's important are projection lines. I'm going to draw those in. You can think of them as rays of light reflecting off of the object in question and being captured by the point of view. So let's draw some of those lines. So here's a line. And so what I now have is kind of this pyramid of vision, which is the square that I started with. That's the thing I'm trying to get an image of. And then the rays of light that are reflecting off the corners, which I'm also calling projection lines. And what I want to do now is um, actually intersect those objects. And then uh, we'll erase a few of them. Let's get rid of the points on this side. And you can see now I have lines drawn on my picture plane, which are the image of that square on the ground as seen from this point of view projected onto this picture plane. So that's what's happening in the three-dimensional space. I have, and you know, we can just clean a few more of these things up. Now I have just the original square. I have my picture plane. I have the projected image of that square on the picture plane. And I have the point of view from which that is being seen. So the last thing I want to show is a slightly more dynamic view of some of these same properties. So I've set up a slightly different arrangement. I still have a rectangle on the ground and a pyramid of vision. These are my projection lines of the rectangle on the ground, uh, the, those rays of light being captured by this point of view. I'm going to use a section tool to let us see some changes in that thing dynamically. But before I do, I'm going to pull one more uh, parallel line, a particularly interesting one, which is a line that's parallel to the edge of the, uh, of the rectangle, parallel to the edges, and goes through that same vanishing point. Um, let's move the plane into view so that we can get a section and get a better look at it. And again, we're interested in this line and in this line. 
Those are the lines that are the projections of these lines on the ground, which are parallel to this guide I've created. I'll just pull one more little guide off because I'm going to be needing that in a moment. Um, the next piece to have you look at is this. Let's move that one around and see if you can see those two lines that I move in as it skips around, they're maintaining an orientation that gets a little bit more clear in just a moment. you'll see that the lines that are projected are converging not totally surprisingly on the place where this guide which goes through the point of view intersects my picture plane. And it's also probably worth noting that that relationship remains the same whenever I move the picture plane around. So that point of view and the place that the projection, that the, sorry, the place the vanishing point appears on the projection plane are directly connected. And it's in fact the point of view of the observer that determines the place of the vanishing points on the picture plane.